I have a, a couple of questions related to some of the most vulnerable members of our community who are often faced with sexual harassment. We have read uh, reports uh, about sexual harassment in the farming industry uh, from farm workers. We have read about sexual harassment with domestic workers. Um, you, these are not necessarily the kinds of folks who are going to be sitting in a room clicking uh, through a presentation that is what the policy mandates the employer to. What are the specific efforts that are being done? You mentioned that you're working with community groups. You know, are there some sort of partnerships with, say, uh, Domestic Workers Alliance, domestic, National Domestic Workers Alliance, to kind of make sure um, that we are going out to the worker so that they at least know from, from us, from government, from state, um, rather than simply relying that the employer is going to do what we hoped it would do? Right. So. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned farm workers because we've actually uh, made some real strides there. Of course, the Department of Labor has DIPA, and they go out and, as you know, as they go out and work with the, with the farm workers uh, on a regular basis. So they're able to go out and have those conversations with the farmers and with their workers. But we've also been able to work with some large, uh, some of the larger farm owners and some of the larger farm associations to make sure that their members understand what's required. And it's been very successful. We're in, the, of course, the early stages of doing this, because it's early stages of rolling this out. But it is a great model. And uh, the governor asked Richard Ball, Commissioner Ball and I, to set up the Ag Labor Committee three years ago. And it has been quite successful in furthering those conversations. And I look forward to doing more of it. It's a great example of using the relationships we already have for this particular instance. In listening to your testimony and hearing some of the questions, one of the issues that concerns me a lot is um, there doesn't seem to be clarity on enforcement. I get that it's not the Department of Labor who's doing it, but do we know how many employers were reached, how many workers came forward? There doesn't seem to be that information available, and when we have a policy, one of the first steps in understanding if it's working, it's getting those numbers. Mm -hmm. And I get that it's early in the process, but if we don't catch it now, it's going to be a mess later, and we're not gonna know the information. And I think survivors deserve to know um, it, that they're being heard, and part of that is that information. So one of the things I'd love to urge is the creation of an interagency task force. Um, when we work together, that model worked very well in going after wage theft. I think that uh, when you create um, a, a group of agencies that all have a different part in looking at the same issue, and they're working together in tangent to make sure that we're addressing a concern, it's easier to make sure that um, advocates, the survivors trust us that we're doing our job, because right now, what I'm hearing is that nobody knows anything and people are going to point fingers at each other and I don't want to be here next year hearing the same thing. So I urge that, that, um, that you speak to the other agencies, to the governor's office and create some sort of task force that's really going to tackle um, this in a multi-agency way. Great. Thank you. Thank you.